be talking about how to use a cube chair, different uses for it, and why you would use it in certain ways. So this is a cube chair. This is my Therapy Doll 6. She's going to help me demonstrate. So this is a cube chair that I'm showing you is on what I call the low side. That means the sides and the back are nice and high and the bottom is sitting low to the ground. So that would be if you have a shorter student uh, or child, or if maybe that child needs a little bit more support on the sides. As you can see, it still leaves a little space for a much smaller person. And in order to fill that space, if you don't want them to play with their balance, you could roll up some towels on either side or put a little pillow or a bolster. Um, but if you want them to actually kind of use their balance and try to accommodate and learn to balance, then you can leave this area open. Or you could just put a few little things right next to their legs just to give them some stability and let them try to figure out their balance on their own. Another way you can use the chair for sitting is that you can flip it right over and use what I call the high side. That means that the seat is a little bit higher off the ground. So as you can see, six's feet aren't really touching. Um, I might use this if I'm trying to really challenge sitting. You can see that they don't have as much available trunk support on this side. This is maybe for somebody who can sit pretty darn well and just needs a little bit of extra stability. The advantage of this chair over, let's say, maybe a standard classroom chair is these are, um, you know, maybe a little bit more support here and kind of gives the kids a little bit more sense of boundaries. It is, however, pretty easy to tip. It's a pretty lightweight chair. So it's not really something that you're gonna to wanna to use for a student that rocks really heavily. Um, and you might actually just have to have somebody sit beside, beside the student or behind them just to kind of protect them. Um, in some cases, you might want this low side, but you want the feet to touch. So you can always put um, some phone books that are taped up or a little bit of like a, um, a step stool under the feet to bring the floor up to the feet because you're gonna want stability through the feet sometimes. Just kind of depends on your goal. Another way that you can use this is actually as a table or a tray. I'm gonna give you a little closer look um, at using the cube chair as a table. So the feet can slide right under the high side or the low side, depending on how you put it. And you might be able to put something for the child to play with here. If this is all you have and you don't have a table or a step stool, you can really make use of this cube chair. Now, if we switch it over, we might still have a little person who has little legs that can fit right under there so that they can use this as a place to play. For kids that need help keeping their arms in front, this is a great option because these naturally high sides kind of block the elbows. We could put some things in here. They'll be completely contained by these three sides so that the child, if they have trouble controlling their arms, won't be pushing the items off trying to get them. So this cube chair is really super versatile. You can also use it as a tray with a high side this way. And now we have a tray that doesn't necessarily have any sides and we can maybe just sit them on a small step stool to use this as a tray. Um, maybe they're sitting in another small chair that they can use this as a tray um, or another cube chair. Maybe you can flip it over and use this side. You really can just use it to your imagination. The one thing I like to do to help accommodate littler kids that tend to slide is I tend to use a little bit of um, Dysum. I'm not endorsing it. I'm not paid by Dysum, but this is a really fabulous tool because it's very sticky when you pull off the plastic. It's like a fruit roll-up um, and you put this in there and it will stick to the bottom of the cube chair and it provides a very high friction surface so that when you put the child in there, they have a harder time sliding out. And if they don't really have good trunk or pelvic control, it's a great tool instead of using your hands to position them and hold them, that they learn to hold their own balance and just the little bit of extra friction just really helps them stay in the seat. Um, if they do have really sensitive skin and issues with skin breakdown, just keep in mind that a higher friction surface is potentially going to cause some skin issues. So what you're gonna wanna do is make sure that their whole 
um, skin area that is on the Dysum is well covered by clothing so that the clothing in the Dysum um, accept the friction and that it's not just bare skin. Another thing you can do is you can add another piece to the back and just sort of drape it over the back like this because it will absolutely stick super well. And that gives our child another friction surface so that they have a harder time sliding, but also they'll have a harder time sliding from one side to another and it just gives them a little bit more of a sense of kind of control. So these are just a few ways on how to use um, a cube chair with a small child and some Dyson. Mm -hmm.